Hey, what up everybody? Uh, this is Stevie Breach coming to you tonight. I just want to say that uh, honestly I didn't know how bad it was in St. Louis and I had a lot of people tweeting me about how WWE should have honestly uh, canceled uh, Survivor Series or moved it at the last moment out of St. Louis. I'm glad that basically everybody was able to make it in there and get out of there uh, before the uh, breaking news came down tonight and basically um, this the uh, businesses and uh, looting is going on all throughout Ferguson. Uh, so to anybody who lives in that area, um, you know, may God be with you. I know that this is just me talking on a video, uh, but honestly, I hope all of you guys uh, stay safe. Anybody that traveled into St. Louis to see uh, Survivor Series, I'm glad that you guys made it out. And uh, from here on out, we'll just be talking about wrestling. I don't want to get into the uh, politics and everything that's going down around there, but just I'm glad that everybody's safe. Uh, when it comes down to it, tonight was a big Monday Night Raw. Uh, Michael Hayes on Twitter uh, promised us a night of, of full of surprises. Everybody knew about... Um, Larry the Cable Guy and Santino coming uh, to Monday Night Raw, and basically that was uh, nothing much. It, it probably uh, didn't live up to the hype that even I gave it to it. It just really wasn't anything. Everything came down to basically Triple H and Stephanie saying goodbye to the WWE. Uh, I was really thinking that they were going to be on Monday Night Raw tonight. I thought there was no way in the world, basically, that WWE was going to let, um, basically... Um, you know, them walk away without one more appearance on television, basically them being able to say goodbye. Even though Vince basically said last night that they would not be allowed to be on television, they would just be workers in the office that had desk jobs, and, uh, you know, that, that, that would basically be it. But the show kicked off uh, with the authority uh, basically coming down to the ring, uh, talking trash about everything that happened last night, basically putting all the blame on losing that match on Sting. Uh, basically, you know, calling him a washed up has been pretty much in Triple H's words. Uh, Triple H was trying to find an answer from Sting, who wasn't. Uh, I believe in Indianapolis tonight is where um, Monday Night Raw was, and um, you know, you know, Triple H was saying maybe you just wanted to to bring some credibility uh, to your career uh, by standing in the ring for thirty seconds with me. Um, you know, really hyping up the fact that I think a lot of people are thinking that Sting versus Triple H is going to be a WrestleMania match. I know that Brian Alvarez on the Brian and Vinny show last night ran through uh, the uh, expected. As of right now, things are always expected to change as things go along. There's always injuries. There's always people to get over. There's always changes on the cards to move things around and try to make a better show. But uh, you know, Sting versus Triple H was one of the matches that is on the on the docket for WrestleMania 31. Uh, so basically just adding a little bit more more fuel in the fire. I got a lot of tweets from people tonight basically being upset um, about Sting not being on Monday Night Raw. But honestly, in my mind, when it comes down to it, Sting is a guy that should be left off of television. He's the guy much like The Undertaker that needs to sort of, you know, have a lot of space and a lot of time in between each uh, appearance. That's what gives it a lot more credibility to the fact. If you think about, you know, when Hulk Hogan was in TNA, or maybe even when Sting was in TNA, uh, there never was a time of missing Hulk Hogan to make the, each appearance uh, a little bit more meaningful. A lot of times on, on uh, Monday Night Impact. But uh, a lot of times on uh, TNA, uh, and the Impact show, basically, you know, there was times when you saw Ho Hogan in almost every segment, uh, no matter if he was involved in the angle or not. It seemed like every angle that went down in TNA for a good little while uh, highly uh, involved Hulk Hogan. I don't know if that was through uh, Dixie Carter or Eric Bischoff or Hogan himself trying to make sure that he was the focal point of everything that was going down. Uh, I think the Bully Ray uh, versus Hogan um uh, sort of feud that went down with uh, him marrying Brooke was a very good angle. And I, I really can't think of anything else that went down uh, in uh, TNA that was really good with with Hogan uh, being there. But, you know, Hogan, Flair, all of these guys, especially, you know, Sting, Undertaker, the less you see these guys, the better it is. WrestleMania is a long way away, and uh, we're going to have to work our way to get there. Basically, um, you know, Triple H and Stephanie were, were saying their ways to say goodbyes, and basically they were saying that it couldn't get any worse uh, than the way they were feeling uh, right then. And uh, that is when the Daniel Bryan music started. And uh, everybody knows, da -da 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 -da, as, as it kicks off, man. And that pop was freaking insane. Indianapolis got an awesome return tonight. 
Um, I never saw anything, never heard anything, never even guessed that Daniel Bryan would be a guy to bring back to television. But the moment that I saw it, I was like, there's nothing better than that right there. That is the, that is the best thing they could have done. Whoever came up with that idea and you know, was able to get Brian to the show and not let anything leak about it, much like the Sting rumors uh, that, that started to circulate, I believe it was Friday night or maybe even on Saturday. Um, I got real strong that basically everybody knew that Sting was going to be there. Roman Reigns was there. Randy Orton was there. Um, so basically nothing about Survivor Series was a surprise, but this was a big surprise. And this is one of the biggest surprises that... Uh, has got me in a long time. Uh, maybe it's my own fault. You know, Shawn Michaels said in the past that the internet is the one thing uh, that was the worst for wrestling. There are no surprises anymore. But when Daniel Bryan came out tonight, I honestly was surprised. It was the first time since I turned my cable off. I was really upset that I was not going to be able to watch um, Monday Night Raw uh, live on television or I watched it on my DVR when I got home. I would have to go home and I'd have to uh, either... I, was, I, I thought I was going to have to download the show, but I ended up finding uh, some videos on YouTube that somebody was lucky enough to post up for me and I was able to check those out. Thanks, Trademark. And um, I'll go from there. But uh, Daniel Bryan coming back was an awesome, awesome moment. Uh, he basically said uh, that he was asked to be in charge of Monday Night Raw tonight. He kept on saying tonight, tonight. He kept on saying that he was in charge. Well, here's the deal. Who asked you to, to be in charge? I mean, the authority has no authority anymore. Vince McMahon seems to be the only guy that has any stroke that's going around in WWE. And why not just say Vince called you if you're saying that the, you were asked... Who who asked you? Uh, I know it's a small question, but it, it's the one thing that's really on my mind. Of, of you know, we need to know who is pulling the strings around the place. And it's awesome to have Daniel Bryan back as the one night GM. And basically, he ran down the authority, basically saying that he was going to put all of them in their place. Uh, basically, saying that Seth Rollins uh, was going to have to fight a. Um, <laughs> what didn't make sense to me is that they told us that it was going to be Seth Rollins and two partners going up against a team of John Cena and Ziggler, and uh, you were going to be able to vote on the partners, um, you know, using the WWE app. The partners that you could choose were uh, Henry and Harper, Henry, uh, Henry and Kane, or Noble and Mercury. Maybe they just knew that we were going to vote a certain way. Uh, but WWE seems to use the uh, sort of voting things, whether if it's on the app or whether if it was calling the 800 number or whether if it was going on the internet. For the Cyber Sundays or Taboo Tuesdays, everything that I've always heard is those votes were always on the up and up. Uh, Vince always wanted it to, you know, if we we're going to put it in the fans' hands, it's really going to be in the fans' hands and we're not going to cheat. Uh, basically, Seth Rollins threw a temper tantrum, basically saying that, you know, security guys shouldn't be able to be put on there because they're not even good security. They're not wrestlers, they're not a part of a team, but J&J security ended up winning the votes as most people thought they would have done and uh, they had to wrestle in, in the main event match against Ziegler and Cena which they lost um, then of course um, as, as, he, as they ran down everybody on the list basically Kane got put uh, in charge of food and beverages where he had to go work uh, in the concession stands uh, uh, yeah, throughout the night Rusev had to choose whether if he wanted to either uh, compete in a uh, battle royal uh, with 20 men for the United States Championship where he could have won and he could have lost the belt he had 19 to 1 odds uh, of losing the title so he went um, you know with the uh, you know the pledging of the United uh, the, the, the Pledge of Allegiance and it looks like maybe Jack Swagger is going to be the number one contender again for the United States Championship he's a good guy to pick he's one guy that took Rusev to the uh, to the limits, um, uh, he he had Rusev beat in two of the three matches that they had. I'm I'm pretty sure. I think that one of them he got killed in. But but you know there was one that he had the uh, the ankle lock on on the outside. He was one of the guys. Uh, Rusev was one of the guys that really sold for Swagger and made it really look like a million bucks and uh, really come through with all of that. Um, basically, it was um, a big show. Um, he he sort of uh, sank his own fate. He he came out there and delivered a promo, and um, you know, and you cried a little bit about making a big mistake. I don't know what the hell they're doing with that. I would think Cena would come out and just want to whoop his ass, but you know, the GM puts you into a role. You got to be into that role. And um, shit. Oh yeah, Mark Henry uh, got put into a match where he had to fight against Ryback. So uh, that was everything that went down with the opening segment, and that was basically the set up everything along. Uh, the lines for, uh, for Monday Night Raw. Um, it was what it was. It seemed like this was a pretty good Raw. It seemed like it was 
Um, you know, the Daniel Bryan return was something that you didn't want to miss, but uh, really anything else along the way isn't anything. Next week is the last week uh, before the return of Brock Lesnar, so next week will be the the, uh, the last Law. I'm sorry, the last Raw without Brock. Uh, see what they do there to, to set the pace, whether they're going to take him and put him on um, the TLC show. It seems like that's a little bit too soon to start booking to it, or maybe they're going to sort of give it a long-term book uh, between Cena and Brock uh, for the Royal Rumble and see where we go from there. So peace out, everybody. Thank you very much, Daniel Bryan, and the yes, yes, yes returns to the WWE. But he said tonight, so uh, we're going to see where we go from there. The Raw GM is back, or the Anonymous Raw GM is back. I guess they're making us forget that they told us it was Hornswoggle uh, by Santino exposing him from underneath the ring. Uh, that one night he was dressed up like Sherlock Holmes. So um, we're going to have to see where they go from here. I mean, I don't know, dude. <laughs> Excuse me! 2010 is calling.